everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, the community online webinar called How to Protect Data and Be Compliant When Embracing the Cloud. I have a special guest today on Ron Rosen. He's Director of Product Management. So I will not be presenting today, but I will uh, lay down some of the ground rules. Uh, so let me do that first, but definitely welcome. Thank you uh, for coming. We will have uh, Imperva customers, some Imperva employees, and some Imperva um, partners. Customers, partners, and employees, yeah. Um, so just some ground rules is that, you know, keep your audio on mute. Uh, we, we know we want to be open, so we want people to uh, ask questions. We do hear somebody that's not on mute, uh, so please put yourself on mute. Uh, if you have questions, please ask in the chat. Additionally, I have created a post on the community, which I'll post here shortly uh, in the chat. But it's if you have questions and you don't get to ask your question or you don't get an answer, post it here. Just reply directly. Again, I'll post that in the chat here shortly. Uh, and then Ron will I'll push Ron to go and answer those questions. By the way, might not get a lot of questions here, um, probably more so in the chat. Um, the other thing is, um, the webinar uh, will be recorded and we will share it to the community sometime next week. And we would like to do more of these. So I do ask uh, employees to, to help, but additionally, we are trying to get some customers to, to help with some of these webinars uh, to kind of get you engaged and involved. Uh, so if you have best practices that you would like to share, maybe it's only a 15 to 30 minute webinar uh, for, to, help, to, to help the community, that would be really cool. Again, we'll be doing more of these in the future. I have one about advanced bot protection uh, coming up probably in about three weeks, but that's not 100% uh, settled yet. Um, so again, use the chat uh, for questions. We will have about 10 or 15 minutes of Q&A at the end, so you can ask the questions in chat, but you can also ask them uh, as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing, Ron. I'm gonna allow you to share so that I can use some people too. By the way, last thing I'm gonna say is, if you wanna be on video, you can. Um, on the uh, bottom left, you could just hit start video. If you don't wanna be on video, that is okay too. So I'm gonna uh, put myself on mute and let you uh, uh, take it from here, Ron. Okay, thank you very much. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes I can. Okay, very good. Um, so thank you everyone. Thanks Chris, for hosting us. Um, what I'd like to do in this session is uh, we just released a, a product called Cloud Data Security, um, as it, we call it CDS, uh, which is aimed at protecting for compliance and security of uh, managed databases in the cloud. And what I would like to go here in the next 45 minutes or so is kind of to take you through the top the thought process of, um, of why we think there is a need for such a solution, what is unique about the solution um, when protecting data in the cloud in, again, going into managed databases, that it's not just another cloud, there is a different, it's a shift in the mindset and, and how things are working. And then we'll do a demo of the product just to show you how it works a little bit. And, and again, if, feel free, um, Chris here will, will manage the, the Q&A, but I would like you to be as much as engaged and, and not just one-sided and hopefully get your questions and, and kind of uh, go through uh, areas of interest to everyone and not just me uh, going on my own. Um, so I'll start with that, you know, what is called DBAS, DB as a service um, is growing. Um, the numbers are, the numbers are there, you know, you can quote Gartner that are, uh, said it last year it grew in 87%, that by 2023, 75% of the data will be managed cloud databases and so on. I, you know, how much the numbers are accurate is one thing, but there is no doubt uh, we sit and we sit in the market that companies are moving to more service oriented um, services such as if it's Lambda on the application side and manage Kafka and uh, those type of things to manage databases. It makes sense, it reduces quite a bit of the overhead. Um, so it's, it's, it's a trend that I believe um, 
some of you are going through or thinking about going. Um, so this is something we see a real trend and, and a, real, um, a real market with a real problem. Now, if we're talking about the problem, there is this reality check of the, the cloud security means that you're definitely protected. There is a shared responsibility model and in DB as a service, more responsibility basically moves to the cloud providers. So they're doing the patching to the OS level that you don't need to do and they're doing patching to the um, database. <clears throat> but again, most of the errors happen on the customer fault. Um, so there is a lot of tuning, there's a lot of things to do. Um, more, more, most companies go to a multi-cloud strategy, which means that there are several clouds and now you need to know what to do in each and every cloud. So it's becoming you know, something to look at and it's very easy to deploy and to do things and database as a service gives you quite a bit of, uh, of tools to do it, but at the same time, um, security and for insert for the compliance purposes can kind of go unseen in a lot of cases. Um, so basically what we have here is CDS. Um, and again, I'll, I'll touch and do a demo later that support right now RDS, all the uh, instances aside from MySQL, and we're gonna add more and more managed databases. Again, some of you, if not all of you have our secure serve product. Um, CDS is, is really focused only on managed databases uh, to places that the secure sphere will not be probably like S3, um, and Redshift, Snowflake, and so on. So now let's just take, let's, um, take a step back and I I'll, I'll, would like to go through the process of uh, why we think that clouds or managed clouds are different. Um, so when companies move to the cloud in order to gain business agility and not just in a, in a lift and shift way where there's a lot of companies that are doing lift and shift, but really when you go cloud native or cloud first, this is where you can utilize the cloud services in a better way to achieve this business agility that most people, uh, most companies are going to the cloud for. Uh, so everything, uh, again, everything is might be a, a bit of a stretch, but a lot of things are changing in the way, from the way that you design software, to the way you deploy software, to the way that you maintain, write it, and so on. So things like we knew the method going from waterfalls, going to agile based DevOps architecture, from monoliths to microservices, um, databases from mainframe to more, very specific database. So really everything in the organization or in the development cycle is changing. Um, and and we need security tools and security solutions that will adhere to those needs and changes. Um, sorry? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll continue. <clears throat> so if we go one layer deeper and say, okay, everything is changing, but let's see how things are changing that affect database, even without going into the security itself. Uh, so when you go with the monolith, uh, from monolith to microservices, um, what happens a lot of the time is that before you had one monolith and one or two databases underneath, now you have each microservice or several microservices have their own DBs and their task specific DBs. So for example, my login microservice can have a, a SQL database, so it makes the most sense. But if I have an order entry, it might have a no SQL database, so this makes more sense to this type of microservice and function. So we see really more databases uh, and more variety of databases. This is the outcome of it. I always give the example of SecureSphere, our own data product. Um, it is a monolith with one uh, Oracle database underneath. CDS is right now something like 18, 19 microservices with 10, 11 RDS instances under the hood. Um, and this is like, a, this is how a typical transformation from a monolith to a cloud native way looks like in, in most companies. Um, so once you have all those microservices, um, deploying it manually is just not an option anymore. Um, you can go and deploy it manually, it just doesn't work. Uh, so everything really becomes DevOps oriented and then it needs to be API driven. Everything needs to be with API to fit into the CI, CD process. Um, and, and this is just another thing, just to fit into this uh, very modern environment. 
And, and the third uh, topic here is elasticity, where you go to the cloud, you, you take it for granted, uh, but not all products work like this. And really you would like to have a product that is completely elastic and can grow with your needs and you don't have to think about the sizing and those type of things. And this is, so those are the three main, there's lots of other differences, but when we try to say, oh, everything is changing, we try to see what in the deployment and in the design of a software um, changes and how it affects the database inside. And if we go one deeper, now how it really affects the security from this point of view. So as a security manager, there's just more databases that you need to be aware of. Um, and really the way that we challenge it is really with easy and fast onboarding of, it takes you two minutes to onboard if it's one or 10,000 databases, and we'll look at it. Um, the elasticity, um, CDS is, uh, uh, is a SAP solution. So it's also, the scale out and everything is completely automatic from the customer point of view. There is no need to, uh, to worry about it. We call it here the security at the speed of DevOps and, and maybe a better term here is never be surprised. So here is the out of the box compliance, the nature of the cloud environment, it's, it's dynamic. Um, services because of the automation and because of the microservice and the scale out services go up and down in a more, in a faster way. Um, and a lot of the time you lose visibility. Um, and if before app team should have provisioned some IT in order to do something today, an app team can spin up a Lambda function that has an RDS in the backend and it might be even an internal, um, an internal application, but it stores some PII and, and no one even thought about going through a process of approving it in, um, in the way that it should. Um, and this is something that, um, again, with CDS, we address this dynamic environment of, of the visibility and see that things are, if things are going up and down, uh, we're aware and be able to do an out of the box compliance and security. Another point that we see is that most customers don't have all the expertise. It's not that if you go, you have with on on-prem and then you went to one cloud and most companies go to two or three clouds. You have the triple the amount of a security engineer. This is not the case. Um, and every cloud by itself has quite a bit of a steep learning curve to understand how to configure it directly. So remember the first slide is most of the fault will be on the customer side and it's a lot of misconfiguration. And here is a solution that we are building that is embedded within the cloud. And if there's cloud services such as AWS Config and Guard Duty and, and Detective and Macy, uh, we are harvesting some of those loads today and we're continuing to harvesting in the future those specific loads in order to um, give you the customer the information that you need in order to protect and see that the database has a good security posture and not just run after logs. Because if you go to CloudFriend, go to Guardian, there's just a lot of specific alerts that doesn't kind of paint the complete picture for the needs that you need in the uh, security. And as I said, multi-cloud strategy. Today, the solution, solution was released three weeks ago. Um, work, right now, it works on AWS, um, RDS instances. Uh, we're building more um, databases into it. And, and we're are going to, uh, to have both GCP and Azure supported in the near future. I didn't look at the comments. Chris, there is any question that need to answer or to continue? No questions as of yet. Okay, good. So what is our vision? So our vision is really to have a cloud native data security platform that enables organizations to manage and reduce cloud data security risk with agility and confidence. It's these words were written in a very uh, specific way. Um, so when we say cloud native data security, we truly believe that in order to address all of the um, points that I've specified before, to be um, to be able to work seamlessly with the CI/CD environment of the customer, um, to be aware of the cloud, to be uh, able to scale out with uh, with the cloud environment as a dynamic environment. This is something that we really rewritten everything in order to be in microservices and to have a complete cloud native, um, it to be cloud native. Um, and 
And where we see most of, and I touched it a little, a little bit before, kind of when you go to the cloud, the speed of the cloud really where it became quite, becomes quite a bit of the friction between security and the agility. So companies want to be agile, they move fast, so going into the services and so on. And then the security managers a lot of the time have to say, no, let's stop here. I need to look at it. I need to be able to uh, validate it. I don't want to be surprised. I want to tell you ahead of time. And really this is what uh, with CDS we're trying to focus on, the ability to give security managers um, the power to not, not to be surprised. So you will see, you'll know when a new database is spin up, you'll know where sensitive information is starting to flow in without the need to manually go and configure and say, I want to monitor this and I want to do this. And how we do it, and after this we'll go into a demo and I think it will be more interesting kind of to show how we address the problems and, and what we do. Um, but I kind of lay out the lay of the land when we looked at it of why managed databases are different than just a database and why an RDS instance is different than a, uh, you know, if I take a MySQL RDS, why it's different than an EC2 on a, a MySQL on an EC2, just because, again, when you choose services, the way that you work is probably different than you work with microservices and you work in an agile way and you know, work with um, DevOps. So a lot of things are changing. It's not just a, I move from one database to another. And in order to address those uh, problems, uh, we can divide our solution to four main parts. Um, and the first part is discovery. So what we're doing in the discovery when we're doing an onboarding, and remember our solution is a, is a SaaS solution. Uh, the onboarding is take something like, and we'll say two minutes, three minutes. We get access, we can read what is called the AWS config. And on an ongoing basis, we monitor the environment. And if there is a new RDS or someone stopped the log or did something, we can uh, detect the change and acknowledge it in the UI. So this is something that you will see. And again, it's an ongoing basis. It's not just a snapshot in time. The discovery is ongoing, talking about visibility, not to be surprised. If someone spin up a database, you will see it and you'll be able to see if you want to automatically monitor it, report it for audit purposes and so on. The other part of discovery is classification. Here we have our patent pending passive classification algorithm. What we're doing here, we're not accessing your, your data or your database. Um, we don't have keys to the database. We leave off the logs, we read the logs, and we look at the actual SQL and we see where sensitive data resides, either by the column name and the actual data that was update, updated or inserted. And this is again going on an ongoing basis, and we'll be able to see once a database has been up, we detect the, the column, and we can say something in the sense if, if a column is sensitive or not sensitive, and then as a user, we can change it. Again, we'll go and show everything here, uh, but this is going again to the point of discovery and classification, where someone spun up a database, sending sensitive information, you will know about it. You don't have to do anything in order to, uh, to validate the classification or to start a, a classification scan. Hey, Ron. The, yes. Uh, question, is this only available as a SaaS solution or can uh, they deploy it within their cloud environment? It's a very, very good question. Um, so, as a, so we have the two options. One is in release, the SaaS is in release, and the other one is at the beta stage for design partners. Um, but, um, but yes, any, any, any one of our customers that would like to be a design partner can deploy it. We have a complete automation, automation of deploying it at the customer AWS environment with their form, takes something like 17 minutes. And the same value um, is delivered via the, what we call the local deployment. The same UI, it's the same code. We, we made it clear that we're not developing two different products. The local deployment and the SaaS has the exact same value, it's the same code, just a different deployment layer. So just to reiterate, the SaaS was released three weeks ago uh, and the uh, what we call the local deployment option is in beta right now and it's open for design partners. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Um, 
talking about audit, this is, you know, audit and policy reports. This is, you know, more of the, the meat of what needs to be done. And, and we have it in CDS, the ability to schedule reports uh, for audit purposes and policy alerts. Again, we'll go in and we'll see it. It will be easier. Um, but what is important here to note that we don't, because it's a SaaS solution, we don't save any information on our end. All the audit logs are going to the customer S3 bucket and, uh, and it's saved there. We're using Athena to create the report, but it is saved on the customer S3 bucket. We don't save any information uh, for a longer period than what we need to. Most of the time it's a day or something that's just in order to, um, to create an insight to, uh, um, for the policy matching and so on. Uh, so this is the policy and the report. And the last one is the insight. This is our machine learning and AI algorithm um, that without any need for configuration is able to help you reduce the risk uh, of your databases. This is something where it's create, it's on a learning basis. It's create a baseline of a behavior. Um, and then we, uh, we can notify you on a specific event, not just an anomaly, but something that is really related to a, um, to a data, uh, to an event that, uh, that has something to do with, uh, uh, with a database risk or a database uh, breach that we, uh, that we might encounter. And again, I'll go into the actual demo and I'll show it in, uh, in more detail. I want just to leave uh, some time to go into the demo. This is a, a before hey, Ron, we go into the demo, Ron, yes. Quick question. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on the classification? If you don't have access uh, to data, how can you determine if something is sensitive? Right. So we see the, the way that we work, and this is a good, and I'll go through it while I'm going through the slide and I'll answer this question. It's a good question. Okay. Um, so on the right hand side is our platform, it's the SaaS platform. On the left hand side is the customer and environment, the RDS and the S3 bucket. Um, so what's going on when we say onboarding, we get access to query the AWS config. In a read only, we can't write or change anything there. And we can specify how many databases you have uh, without starting to send any data. Um, the RTS that we query um, and, you, and the customer decides to monitor, we collect the logs. So there is a need to uh, open the mm -hmm. database. Can I get a coffee? A coffee, a coffee. The, uh, the database log, and um, and we read the, the logs. Basically, the actual queries that went into the database. Looking at the logs, there will be statements like insert, e you know, insert this value to email. So think about it. Then we can see, okay, there is a column named email, and we see a value. We sanitize it because we don't need to see the the actual value, but we know that this is an pattern of an email and we can say, okay, and we'll see it in the product. Here we have a column email and we look at the data. So by looking at the log and looking at many logs, by looking at the actual column name and the actual data in the query, we can start to do classification on the fly. Well, this is how we do the classification without actively scanning the database on all the, uh, the rows and columns that it has. So hopefully I answered this question. We'll I think we'll see it in the demo where uh, it will be clear. So going back here, once we start to monitor a database or the customer says, I want to start to monitor this database, we start to read the logs from the RDS uh, instances. Uh, we read them into our environment. We normalize them. So the different databases, if it's a SQL, if it's a MySQL, if it's a MariaDB, if it's Oracle, we normalize all of the data, we enrich the data. Uh, we classify the data. We see if there is some policy matching and alerts. Uh, we go to the AI that we have. And if there are reports for auditing, we create the reports and basically put them back in the customer S3 bucket uh, for its, its use for the, uh, the actual, for auditing. Uh, this is basically how it works. Um, we're working on bringing more clouds. So right now it's work on AWS and we're looking to bring on um, soon Azure and GCP as well. This is, this is a section of kind of me waving with my hands and telling you what is the problem and, and how we're trying to solve it and what we're doing. Um, let me 
start the demo with one movie um, that shows the, um, the onboarding, how simple it is to onboard. I'm with the phone, and this is here with the computer, so you're probably not going to hear the sound, but I'll tell you what's going on. Tell me if you hear the sound. I don't think you'll hear it. Oh, maybe you... Yep. Can you hear it? Sort of, yep. Here you'll hear it better. It's not that good. It's, it's yeah, yeah. back here um, and Chris it was kind of experiment you could hear the voice right it, it was okay it wasn't great what I can do okay. is um, <laughs> send a link out to everyone uh, there is a question okay. um, what is the yep. percentage of false positives for data classification and can it be uh, and can it detect data types like driver's license so let me go into uh, let me go into the demo and we'll go over and you will see how we uh, classify the specific data types and what data types we have. And as for the false positive, um, it's I don't have this specific number, um, so I can't tell you what the ratio of false positive is. We do have a confidence level for each one. So we have possible sensitive and sensitive, so it's not just a binary mode. And the customer can go and. And, and address and fix it if you think that it's a false positive. We didn't get any specific uh, from all the beta that we had and the customer, it was not raised as an issue till now, and we're in enhancing it all the time. So I don't have the specific rate of false positive, but it was not an issue till now um, in the way we work. So let me go here into the actual demo. Yes, I'm live. Yes, CDS demo. So this is the access to the uh, um, to the cloud data security. I'm going through the um, the demo account that that we have, and I I, I will try not, you know, it's, it's configuration basically, but I'll try to go on the interesting parts and not just go one one uh, uh, one after the other just as a configuration. Um, so let's start with the movie that we saw. Um, so there is two ways of adding an account. One is really automatic, as you see, you just put the name and the account ID, click OK. It's really fully automatic. There is nothing in the video that was uh, skewed or changed. It's really open the AWS and do everything. And if a customer would like to do everything manually, it can be done. All we need at the end of this process is cross account role to allow us with specific policies that we specify to allow us to query the AWS log, the uh, RDS log, to uh, query the AWS config. But a customer can go here, create the policies, and we have customers that have done it. And at the end of the day, give us the role ARN and the external ID. Those two are the identifier for the cross account role. And then we have access. The end result is the same. Either the customer is doing it um, or we are doing it uh, automatically. As you saw here, um, I can add and most customers do add more than one account, and I can see everything in one view. Um, it's not um, limited to one account only. So if I go back to the dashboard, the first time I, I, um, I onboard an account, I can see all the databases. It doesn't mean that I read the logs of all the databases. Here it just says that I can see in this customer account, those two accounts, 100, uh, 103 uh, cover assets. And if I'll click on it, I can see the name of the account. Remember, I can have more than one cloud account. The name of the database, the type, the state, some of them deleted, and I can go and delete it from here as well. If the encryption is enabled or disabled, this is a metadata that we get. 
uh, we don't need to query any log. Uh, from this point on, this is where you, once you start to monitor the databases, at this point, we start to query the logs, we pull them into our environment, and we can start to process them. Uh, I can go and do a sort here and ask to sort by the databases that I monitor, and I can see here the different databases, and the different databases have sensitive information or possibly sensitive information. Uh, this is the point where I'm actually starting to monitor the database. When I said before, as a security manager, you can never be surprised. So if you go into settings and you set um, those three to on, um, it was if those three to on, this means that any new database that's going to be detected is going to be automatically monitored and everything will be applied automatically. Monitored, audited, all the policy match, everything will work on it uh, without the me as a security manager to do anything um, in order to see if there is classified information in it or not. So if you go back to the dashboard, probably what is more interesting here is um, the sensitive data. So let's see how this works. Here is a database clinic demo is one that I played with a few days ago. Um, so I can see I, I clicked on the actual database. Again, I see our, what we see out of the database it has no connection, real connection to the actual user database from um, any queries to the actual database itself. And for the question of what type of uh, categories we have is, either free text, personal first name, state or province, zip code, and so on. I don't, I believe, nationalize the ID. I, I do believe that we have a driver ID number. I have to check it. Um, and you can see that here, I have 14 sensitive information that based on the column name, here is the, the column name I can see it here and the table and the schema. Based on the column name and the actual data that we saw, uh, we could, and we saw enough of it, we can say in a confident way, that this is, you know, column name phone, there's actually phone number in it. Um, and if I'll go to possibly sensitive, this is where we still don't have um, enough confidence to say, oh, this is sensitive, but the more data that we're going to see, um, very likely that possible sensitive will just move in there to unclassified or to sensitive data. Um, so those are the, uh, I think there is interesting, there is, I played with it even yesterday. So let's see here, there is a comment. So you can see comment um, here. That comment at the beginning was just a, a free, um, was just a table without any uh, uh, specific information in it, uh, without any sensitive information in it. And I start to send sensitive information into it in uh, some, uh, in some script and automatically after I sent enough uh, sensitive information into it, it was, um, it moved to sensitive data in order to, uh, uh, to show that this is sensitive data, although comment doesn't say too much about if it's sensitive or not. So it is based on the, the actual data um, in it. Um, as I said, if I think that there was a mistake or a false positive, I can go into here and mark something as um, non-sensitive and it will move into here. Um, and this is basically on the um, sensitive data portion. Again, this is on an ongoing basis. So even if someone is altering the table um, and changing and adding a column, um, even if like this comment that was a comment at the beginning, but someone started to send some sensitive information to it, uh, we'll detect it and it will uh, appear here. And here I see some more of, of just graphs on the number of events that are going into this specific into this specific database. So this is about discovery and classification. Um, I'm just losing here. Chris, I'm kind of asking you because with all this uh, Zoom, a lot of the time I, I don't no, know where, you know, if there are no, questions or not. So, um, yeah, no other questions stop me if, yet. if they are, right? Okay. I'll stop you every time, yeah. no worries. Yep. Okay, um, very good. So the, the other thing that we is, uh, we talked about, so remember, we had those four pillars, right? We had discovery, we had classification, so we saw discovery, we saw classification. Um, let's go into policies and reports. So report is the most basic one. 
this is where we, and again, some of you are secure for customers, so there is a notion of audit policy. Because we read all the logs, we are in monitor all. Uh, we read all the logs from the um, database, and we save them in the S3 bucket, as you can see with the all events here. But then, for audit purposes, you would like to have for PCI or for SOC specific reports that are run on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and you have them when Mr. Auditor comes and you can say, yes, do you want to see all the failed logins? Here are all the failed logins. So to create those, you just go to every report, you give it a name, and there is a list of 12 type of reports. We're going to add more and more reports. Now we're working on a dynamic report system that you can define it yourself. Um, some of the reports don't require any, of, any information. For example, login and log out. Sorry, login and log out. I just have to give it a name and, and, and schedule it. There is no need for an input on my end. Uh, but if I'll go to a non-DBA performing privilege operation, this is where I do need to, in a common delimited way, put the DBA users uh, that will match and the actual lookup table of what privilege operations are. This is something that we have, uh, at least that we have behind the scene. So every user that will create, in this case, either an app, alter table, drop table, create, and so on, uh, will have a match and will go into the report. I'll go back to the report. Each report can be scheduled um, and either it succeeded or failed. What does it mean succeeded or failed? Remember, this is in your, in the customer S3 bucket. This is a testing environment, so we're failing it automatically. So some of it is failed due to permissions, but once it, it works, you shouldn't see any, any partial succeeded or failed. It's basically taking the Athena and running a specific report on your S3 bucket in order to have those reports that you need. So if I go to the failed login, um, I can see here that I created uh, this account. This is the link to the actual report that was made. And if I click this one, now it will not get in because I'm not in my AWS environment, but it will open just where the file sits within your S3 bucket, and it's just a CSV file uh, that you can open in Excel uh, that is the actual report with all the fields for um, this login and logout. And you can see here, if you want to take it because we're embedded within the cloud and it's, it's important, we didn't want to spend time developing um, services that the cloud provider gives, give us almost for free and in a, in a really good way, so all the reporting, instead of writing a reporting engine, we decided to use Athena, and when we run on GCP, we'll likely run, uh, use BigQuery. There is no need to redevelop those. So you can basically go into here, copy the actual query that we run in the Athena, and run it yourself in the Athena and alter it or do something. So there is no magic. We're really open platform here and just trying to make, to bring the knowledge that we know of what our privilege operation uh, what are um, with the user, what, are, what is the sensitive data and be able to report to sensitive data and so on. And again, the scheduling is quite simple. I can either do a daily report or a weekly report, unsubscribe, subscribe, and so, and this just run automatically. Most customers don't go into screen too often. It's something that they set up, they know they have the report. S3 is, you're not gonna have an issue with this space there. Um, and you can manage the life cycle to Glacier and so on if, uh, if you would like even to reduce more the, uh, the storage cost. So this is about reporting. It's quite straightforward. The other, uh, the other one is policies. So policies is a good way that one of our ads is, uh, likes to explain it is kind of like TSA, see something, say something. We do see a lot of customers that they kind of mix between policies and reports. Some of the reports use the policy, but this is more of, we can say real time. Remember this, and I can touch it, we're not the proxy. And maybe it's a, it's a good point to stop for a second and say that when you go to such a, to a, such a solution, you can take the proxy way or the non-proxy way. There are solutions out there that the proxy way. We believe that the proxy doesn't really fit with the cloud environment. It's a single point of failure. Scaling is an issue. Um, so we decided to go with the, with the no proxy. Um, so again, so here it's, it's close to real time. It's in a matter of seconds. Um, and 
I can go in to edit one of those reports that they did. And here, in this case, it's a policy of um, active um, DBA, uh, uh, unauthorized DBA read. I have two tables that I have to fill in. One here is the table name. So here I wanted to say, I know the treatment is a, is a table that I would like to uh, pay a, a close attention to. And this is the user that I would like. So admin, in theory, should never query treatment. There is no reason for admin to query treatment. Um, and if I, and if I, um, and, and if it happens, trigger an alert. And in a second, I'll go back to and I see what we can do in alert as a follow the action. Um, so those are the, the policies. If I'll go in to add a new policy, it's quite easy. Right now, there are four types of alerts either unauthorized from a source IP, if I want to see from a different, a specific source IP, if something uh, was sent, um, the unauthorized DBA would we saw that we targeted account usage. And again, this is something that we're really now working on creating more dynamic, what we call custom policies that will be able, any customer will be able to create his own set of rules based on events, tables, IP, and so on. Once an alert is triggered, there is a screen here called policy alert. And you can see here my alert DBA activity treatment on, on treatment. If I'll click it, um, I'll be able to see here some of the parameters, the table name that was active with treatment. And here is how the query looks like. And you can see that the question mark is when we sanitize the data, uh, we don't show any, any specific emails or any, any data like this. And you can hey, see here again, yes. Quick question, any integration with LDAP or similar to populate the list of privileged users? It's a good question. So no, but what everything is an API first. So our, um, the, uh, our goal, and I really, because it's a fast and it's moving fast, I need to see where is here. Is, the point here is that with API, people will be able to populate the list um, or to upload a, or to upload a, a list like a file list, a CSV. Uh, but right now, it does. It's not uh, connected to Active Directory. Again, it's something that we will uh, we will look at, and if, if needed, we'll be on the roadmap. We know how to do it. We did it. We just need to see in the different clouds what makes the most sense. Good question. Thank you. Um, so those are here. I can see the actual um, events again. If you saw events, can be a critical or a non-critical. Um, and what is, what is interesting here that a lot of, uh, either in secure sphere or in other product, there is a followed action either to send to a syslog because a lot of the time when I have a policy alert like this, I would like to do something with it. I would like to put it in my workflow, either to open a ticket on in service now and send it into a sim. There's lots of different ways to integrate with it. And we thought that the best way is if we live in the cloud, really be open and use the cloud platform as it should. So if I go back to policies, I don't know if you notice, and I'll go to edit. At the bottom, I can spe uh, specify and uh, follow the action. And in this case, what it's doing, it's writing into an SNS topic. So in AWS, you can open an SNS topic and give us the ARN to the SNS topic, and we will write to the SNS topic. What this gives you is really the, um, it's a webhook. We, open our platform and tell the customer, now you can do whatever you want with it. It's very easy with SNS to, sorry, uh, to assign an email, to assign a push notification, or to, run a or to run a complete Lambda that is doing some magic of enriching the data, sending it to a service now, sending it to a theme, um, and so on. In this case, um, we wrote and we can share a simple Lambda that in this one that is subscribed and putting this alert in an S3 bucket, and then it can be triggered from there to something else. It's completely scalable. We don't have to worry about scale. SNS is a very much uh, robust uh, service by AWS that is used uh, quite a bit. Um, and again, in setting an email is, is quite easy as well um, to be able for a followed action. So again, this is something of how we use being a cloud native solution, we use the cloud and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel wherever you can use. We can use something in the cloud that better fits the cloud um, design pattern 
uh, will continue to do so. And this is a good example of how customers really like this uh, uh, ability to use uh, the cloud here. So this is on, on policies and, and alerts. Um, the last one is the security incident. This is, if you remember, we talked about four pillars, discovery, classification, audit and report, and insights. Insight is our machine learning algorithm. We're adding more and more to it. Right now, um, probably the most useful one, we have three algorithms already in, in it. The one that is quite nice is multiple uh, consecutive pair of logins. Basically, it's a brute force, brute force to your database. Um, if I'll go into it here, I didn't have to set anything up. Um, so we learn the base activities and then we see if something is, we look for this specific anomaly or brute force. So we're not telling you, oh, we found an anomaly. We don't believe that we, we should create more alerts. You go to the cloud, you have enough alerts to worry about. We want to give you something concrete that you can do something about. Um, so, so this is something that um, in here you can see Total fade logins is 303, and it happened in, what, a minute and 10 seconds. Uh, so we created an alert and grouped it all together, and we can show here that the, uh, the Postgres, uh, the name of the user is Postgres and what the, uh, the error is. Um, so this is about the incidents. There is more incidents. You can see here that it's uh, set by um, major, minor, and so on. The minors are ones that we see something that you might want to know about, like, oh, after a week that we've uh, looked at the system, now we see a new user in the system that we, we didn't see before. So we alert you on it, or a specific user going to a database that you didn't need to go before. Uh, again, what we're trying to do with CDS in general is to try to make it as automatic and as almost as self-service as we can in order to get you this compliance out of the box, security out of the box, and do more and more things automatically where we can, either via machine learning or just by um, very easy setup. So if you go kind of back, remember, if I go and I put settings here, all thing on on, and I go and I set some policies that I want and some basic reports, from this point on, any new database that will go through the system will be automatically monitored, automatically will be classified and the reports and the policies will automatically be applied with and the security incidents without the need for me as a security manager to do anything specifically actively in order to uh, secure my environment. So if we try to do everything by default, everything automatic, um, because you just believe that the dynamic environment of the cloud just is not built. Solution needs to be built to be very dynamic in that way and not ask your security manager to run after your app team and see that, oh, I need to do this and I need to do this, or ask them to change something in the way they work in order for you to be able to, uh, to address the, uh, the security and compliance needs. I think that th there is, I think that that's it basically. Uh, there is a bit more things, but I wanted really, not just to talk about CDS, but just to talk about why cloud database is different and to showcase with CDS how we address those issues. Um, and this was the um, this was the focus of of this session, and I hope it helped. I'll be more than happy to answer more questions, or um, or you Iran, can email me. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you if you're giving out your email, just put it out in the uh, comment section. But I do have a, a question. I think um, it says we are saying that no agents are required to be installed. Is that what you're saying, or Yes, yeah, so in so there is two in the SaaS version there is nothing that needs to be deployed. No agent, nothing. All there is to do is you saw the movie, the one minute movie, it's actually what it takes. One minute, it's across the control, and we can start to monitor and do all the magic that we showed right now. There isn't anything that I've had there isn't any small thing that I needed to do here in order to make it work. This is how it works. In an ongoing basis, no agent, nothing. You know, like the, I don't know if I don't remember if Salesforce is still, but Salesforce has this slogan of no software. So this is kind of no agent. There is nothing to be installed. It's a complete task solution. On what we touched at the beginning on the local deployment, there is still no agent. All they need to do is to install this solution, deploy it more than install um, in the customer environment, 
He sees exactly the same menus. It acts exactly the same. You still need to onboard. Everything looks the same. It just no data leave the customer environment. Um, no logs leave the customer environment. Uh, but in, even in this uh, deployment, no agents, nothing. Nothing needs to be installed on the actual database or in the proximity of the database in order to start to do this uh, policies and the security and the compliance. Thank you. Uh, can we forward the security events to a SEM, such as Splunk? Yes, yes, absolutely. And this is where I, uh, I said that we said it with the SNS topic, and the SNS topic can have a Lambda that just forward it to a SIM, to an S3, enrich it and then send it to a SIM. Sometimes you want to enrich it maybe with data that you know about it and send it to a SIM. This is really the beauty of the SNS topic that we make it a completely open. We have a webhook. Think about it, there is a webhook for each policy alert, and you can do it whatever you want with it. Again, Splunk, S3, ServiceNow, all of the above, um, and so on. Um, also, can it be a hybrid solution? So this is a good question. No. Um, so we are focusing on managed databases, and the more we go, so RDS is one type. Um, we're looking in to have it protect S3 bucket, Redshift, uh, more of data lakes, everything in managed databases. And we think that this is a bit of a different use case. Um, so we have our current secure serve product that work on an EC, you know, uh, on databases that are deployed on an EC2. Um, right now, again, we can do it a lot, but right now the focus of CDS is really, we think there is a, a big problem to address there uh, with a focus on managed databases. And we wanted to solve this problem um, really well. So right now it's fully CDS is, as the name suggests, cloud data security, fully um, focused on cloud managed database. As of now, that, um, quickly, any roadmap for uh, uh, DBAS, DBAAS providers like Snowflake, uh, MongoDB, yeah, so, Atlas, etc. Yeah, um, so the roadmap, it's a good question. So it's a question. So the roadmap right now is we're adding, the, the one that is really on, on the radar is Redshift. Um, and because we're a SaaS, what we're trying to do here, there is enough value. Um, it's out there, people, are, customers are using it and we would like, and we're developing really fast. So there isn't even a, a weekly deployment. Again, microservices, you know, all the things that they talked about in deployment, we can even deploy several times a day. Um, so we're trying to be very close to customer demand and see that we're developing what customer needs uh, and we're following it. So right now, Redshift is the first one that we're working on. Um, and then we have DynamoDB, a lot of people are asking for. Um, and we're looking into uh, Snowflake and S3. And S3, we're talking about S3 from an application, uh, applicative data. So what we see, we use it as well. A lot of companies use S3 as a data lake, and then a lot of people use Athena to query the database, and no one really knows what's going on there. So they have a BI team that query with Athena in S3 bucket. It might have sensitive data. It's kind of the wild, wild west in a lot of companies there, and this is another area that we are addressing uh, in the near future. So those are the main databases that we're looking at right now. Um, MongoDB Atlas, it's a managed database. Um, it, again, it, it changes because we're not a proxy and we're reading the logs. Um, should be in a lot of ways easier, and this is um, we're trying it to be the case. It will be easier for us to support more and more databases uh, faster and faster. But the roadmap right now, as I said, is Redshift, S3, um, Dynamo, and we start to get quite a bit of Snowflake as well. And those are the things we're looking in AWS right now. And then we have another cloud, which is likely going to be Azure this uh, year. And again, we're trying to see if we match what customer needs, and we're debating between GCP and Azure, but it seems like Azure has uh, more potential and more uh, customer uh, pool for. Um, does it integrate with the attack analytics? It doesn't integrate with attack analytics um, because attack analytics is, um, you know, I mean, before I answer, there is no, Attack Analytics is doing something different. Attack Analytics is doing clustering for application security uh, um, attacks um, and, and just doing a smart clustering there. 
um, it was not designed to uh, to work on on data security events. So this is why it's not, uh, for example, attack analytics can work on secure sphere WAF, but it doesn't work it doesn't work on secure sphere DAM because it's a completely different algorithm. Um, the more relevant to attack analytics is the product we have DRA, uh, data risk analytics. This is it's not the same, but this is the, our AI and machine learning to uh, our secure sphere DAM. And the insights that we see here, this is kind of the beginning of trying to get the DRA capabilities um, into, into this bracket here as an insight. But again, it doesn't translate one to one. So we're looking to see if attacks that we know that are happening on, in the on-prem are, you know, we can take them and just port them to the cloud, but we just want to see that they make sense, that they look the same because we make some you know, the machine learning is creating a profile and would like to see that the profile of the behavior of in an on-prem environment is similar to the one in the cloud. In some cases it is, in some cases it doesn't, um, but this is more on the inside. So it's a long answer about attack analytics, but the short answer is no. Great, that is all the questions. So Ron, thank you so much. This was uh, really informative and really good. Um, there were really good questions asked, so thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I will send here in the comments my, uh, uh, my email. Um, feel free, and there is, you can contact me um, while well, I'm putting my Gmail, just a second, I have to, this is <laughs> um, not my Gmail, this is my email, um, CDS, is for any of our customers is free for trial. Uh, so if you want to try it out, if you have an idea with environment, please, please, please reach out uh, and we'll take care of you. Great. By the way, everyone, this will be recorded and shared uh, sometime next week. And uh, um, uh, if you have questions, uh, additional questions, we do have a link on the community. Just go to community.imperva.com. And uh, if you haven't created a login as of yet, create a login, it's very easy. Um, and then you can ask your question there. Also, uh, you'll need to sign on to the community for additional uh, webinars just like this. Uh, our next webinar looks to be around um, uh, bot uh, mitigation, so advanced bot mitigation. So we'll be doing something there in about three weeks or so, maybe sooner. I, I'm getting with the guy next week and we'll be talking on, on dates. Um, Thank you everyone so much for coming. Really appreciate it, Ron, for your time and efforts. So thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you.